Hi, Denny Johnson here. This is an introductory session to the study of birth order. Many times I've been asked by people, why study birth order? How does that relate to me? I have no kids, there were only two, you, you have a system of six or twelve. Why is it so important to study this dynamics? Well, for me the term birth order is probably not the best term this is a study about life. This is a study about everything. But it's mostly a study about you and the dynamics about how your family works, how it affects your well-being, happiness, feelings, the family tree dynamics, how it affects your spiritual evolution, how it affects your soul, your relationship to God. This is, for me, this is virtually a study of everything. So we're going to do a series of 10 minute recordings so that you can do it in bite sized little pieces and then we'll have a series of one hour recordings using case studies about how to be able to use the system for your own personal examination of yourself or your family or friends. This is the basic way that we're going to work with it until eventually you are now capable of learning anything that I know about the birth order systems. Now. People say, well, is this scientifically valid? Well, no, I don't have any scientifically valid studies for you to be able to say, yes, this is exactly how it is according to the latest studies. I don't have that. It's not going to be happening for a while because this is quite an unusual way of seeing it. So what I'm asking you to do is to test each part. Don't accept it because I say it or anyone else does examine each piece and see if it makes sense or not and test it with the people around you so when we talk about number one girl we'll, we'll go through a complete history of what it represents and how she is and then go out and examine your friends who have a number one girl a girl who comes first and then see if that basic way of describing her is the way that your friends can relate to then look at a number one boy or a number two boy and so on. Part of what happens in this is that not only do you begin to confirm it, but you begin to set up a dialogue with your friends and family about who they are, how they're different, how dad felt this way about the number one son, and he felt this way about a number two son. and It just begins to change the flow of your entire family and your friends around you just by your willingness to be able to discover something about yourself and them. This produces a very viable experience of being able to feel integrated into the community, to resolve family issues, to bring understanding. The issue of this is about knowledge, but please, test every part of it. If it doesn't make sense, set it aside for a while and then check something else. Because there are things in here that, well, quite frankly, that you've probably not heard of anywhere. But I can assure you, this works if you just apply it over a period of time. Here's how the basics of it functions. I'll show you a series of maps. We deal with 12 different brothers and sisters. Now what this means is, there are six circles here that represent six sisters. Now in this diagram, they are here from top down because we'll say this is number one girl, this is number two, this is number three. These are the children conceived by the father. He controls the gender sequences of the children. Now so these are the dynamics if he had six daughters in a row, each of them would have a different characteristic, a different learning style, a different personality attribute. This is basically different parts of the family that he would create. Now, if he has six sons, there's six different types of sons. The number one son is very different from the second son. And the number four son is very different from the number two son. There are similarities in many of them, but when you understand this, you actually begin to recognize that there's more to this. For example, you start to find out that according to this model, that each one of these daughters, in some mysterious way, and I don't completely understand it at times, 
is connected to different parts of the family tree. So, number one girl, we say oftentimes is related to the father's side of the family and the father's mother. Virtually every one of these symbols in red relates to the father's side of the family. Every one of the symbols in blue relates to the mother's side of the family. Generally, those things in red, they have a tendency to be attracted to the father. And they have many things that are characteristic from the father's family. That doesn't mean they don't have something also from the mother's family because there's equal contributions and they come out as internal processes or external processes. And another time I'll explain that. But this is how the basics of the family tree is connected. But this is more than just the epigenetics. This is more than just the transgenerational patterns in the family tree. This also begins to show you how the interior of our own being exists. Because there's another part to this. If I show this part to you, what I'm showing you now is how this is at the bottom. Boy number one, girl number one is at the bottom, and this sequence here is actually sequences inside of me. Now I know that's a little abstract to think of sequences inside your body that correspond to these symbols. But there are things that science won't confirm for a while, like you have energy that moves up and you have energy that moves down. We call these ascending and descending forces. There's no scientific evidence that your toes are like a root system and there are things that flow up your body. There is no scientific evidence that I know of that talks about how things move down and how the cycle of ascending and descending, it now contributes to everything about you, every one of the glands, organs, body systems, everything inside of you, the dynamics of how you live, feel, act, create, how you're able to meet the world, how you form relationships, why you might have certain symptoms. By the time you start to look at this, you realize that the study of the birth order is actually a study of how you evolve, change, grow. This is not just related to your physical existence on earth. This is how your soul increases its capacity when you leave this world. This is a study of other elements beyond the physical senses. This is a study of things that you will use later. This is how to fly your spaceship. That spaceship, by the way, might be your soul. How high can you go? Well, it depends on a whole series of things about how well you're using the masculine and feminine forces. Now, there are things that are quite unusual but very useful about this system. For example, in this map here, we're describing how the sequences of the birth order patterns of the six suns, they come in a sequence that is also correspondent to the times of the day and the seasons of the year. I know that's odd to say that a birth order pattern in the family that relates to a gland, an organ, a body system, a meridian flow, a, a chakra, whatever you want to call these systems of communication, how these are also related to 24 hours in a day. That's called a cycle. In 24 hours in a day, there are 12 primary expressions or vibrations, if you want to call that, energies, life force. These are 12 different patterns. These also relate to what we call seasons. There is the spring of life. That's under age 16. There is the summer of life. You know about the summer of life, right? The hot, the fire, the hormones, 16 to 32. We also have the autumn of life, the afternoon. We have the winter of the day, which is the nighttime. This is a cycle of 24 hours. This is cycles of seasons. This is a cycle of one pattern of life from 0 to 64. That's a lot to consider. Not easy to be able to confirm that that works in some way. 
Now the processes here are directly related to the ascending and descending times of the day. Yes, it relates to the waxing and the waning of the moon. It relates to vibrations and colors and frequencies and sounds and aromatherapy and all the vibrations of the world. Yes, all of this is here. But this is just an introduction into the experience of how this works. This is the overall system to give you an idea. Yes, is it possible to understand if you have a particular symptom that began at a particular age? Is it possible to begin to understand where that symptom may be coming from? I know it's an odd thing to consider that your coughing might actually be related to unresolved feelings inside you that were transmitted to you by your mother about her relationship to her father. How can that be? That relationships and feelings in ancestors who were a hundred years ago, how can their feelings be transmitted down to you to produce symptoms? That's what this is about. There's a lot of information here. It will take us a long time to go through each part of this, but that's what I'm willing to do. I'm willing to give you the opportunity to learn each part of it, test each part of it. Some things you can't test, you have to go on faith, it either works or not. Science will be a long time coming up to the understanding that all of the times of the day are related to different years of your own life. I know that's pretty odd, but if you stay with this for a while, you're going to have a, an enormous amount of fun. You're going to know yourself better, your family better, you're going to be able to see people differently, and then you're going to come across, okay, if there is a broken part of my ascending flow, how does that affect my pancreas? How does my immune system feel about my liver? Is it possible that an unresolved hatred in one grandmother can be destroying a body system? Yes. Is it possible to be able to feel this, change this, restore this? If we understand the mechanics of how this works, we also have the capacity to be able to be in harmony with it. How does this actually work? Look, I'm learning this myself. I don't claim to know it all about this. I'm actually a child learning how to navigate something by feeling. I've been doing this a while and I realize that there's so much more to learn, I won't be done, ever. Well, you can join us for the next session. Thanks for coming.